Hey, welcome back. Hi. It's great to see you. Thanks for tuning in. You know, so much of the material, as we've often said for these videos, is created from conversations and questions that we receive during the week. Mm -hmm. And of course, this last week was really no exception. We received a number of questions pertaining to the what's all the uproar about pertaining to the lawsuit with the National Association of Realtors yes. over compensation, yes. right? And as many of you have probably heard, uh, there have been two prominent suits that have occurred recently uh, against the National Association and some national real estate companies pertaining to just that, buyer compensation. And the um, recently there was a judgment uh, for some Missouri home sellers mm -hmm. against the National Association and two very well-known prominent national real estate companies that um, was pretty substantial. Yes, it was quite a bit of money. Yeah, quite it, a bit it of money. truly was. Yes, and I think when we talk to people, I think what they were asking for is how is this going to change the way we do business? You know, if I want to buy a house, what are the ramifications? Same thing if I want to sell a home. What are the changes that's that's going to happen? And so we thought we'd give you a little bit of perspective yeah. and discuss this topic since it's, it's, it's a good time to do it. Yeah, it's been all over the place. So we thought it would do that. So um, to give you that little bit of perspective, Ray, you've been in this industry for this week makes 40 years. Yeah, and you I had think to say it, didn't that's you? a big deal. So congrats on that. Yeah. But with that, with that knowledge, with that experience that you have, I'm very curious to know what changes have you seen over the years that's created this type of stir? Because let me tell you, there is a stir. Yeah, there is a it's stir. It's like, how am I going to do business? I'm going to quit. So I, I think it definitely, I'd be curious to see what you had to say. Well, you know what? There have been instances that I do remember, and there have been those moments of panic, I think, <laughs> for real estate agents as to how we're going to continue to do business. Uh, two that come to my mind very specifically was back, way back in 1995, the statute in Virginia was actually changed that we as real estate agents could represent both sellers and buyers, meaning yeah. that in the previous to that, we mostly represented sellers. Okay. But when this statute was amended, we now could represent sellers and we could represent buyers separately. It also created questions within a firm as to whether a buyer and seller could be represented in a firm. And then through dual agency, could an individual, a team like Denise and myself, mm -hmm. represent both a seller and a buyer at the same time. It created a tremendous amount of excitement mm -hmm. and people were questioning how this industry will proceed forward. Will we continue to do business the way we have done it? What major changes are in front of us? Right. So you fast forward a little bit. Another exciting time came in 2012 okay. when Virginia then started to mandate that any agency agreement needed to be put in writing. That meant for both sellers and buyers. Previously, we had used the listing agreement with sellers as the written documentation for representation, mm -hmm. the duties that we owe to them, the duties they owe to us. But we were never required necessarily to put that same agreement in writing with buyers. So we could represent a buyer, but we didn't necessarily have to put that in writing. Wow. So by mid-2012, we were now mandated that that had to be done. Well, that created another stir because these were conversations, of course, that we were having with buyers. Mm -hmm. We pledged and promised to work for them. We were their agent, but we didn't have to outline exactly what the guidelines were, the duties that we were responsible for, and most importantly, the compensation wow. that was due to us from those buyers. Another dramatic stir. I remember having these <laughs> discussions in sales meetings and discussions on one-on-one with agents and how are we gonna proceed forward? Mm -hmm. How will this actually work? Will our industry continue to change in ways 
that will not make it beneficial for us, right? Yeah. So I think the 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 saying that I always think about is that the more things change, the more they seem to stay the same. And throughout the upheaval in 1995, the upheaval again that was created in 2012, business continued to pretty much move forward the way that we had. There were benefits certainly that were derived from those two situations, yes. but we continue to do business pretty much as usual. As usual. And I, I can't imagine a time when you wouldn't have those documents in place for both the buyers and the sellers. So yeah, there was, really there was truly that. You know, with that historical perspective, we also probably need to look to see how we will move forward at this point. I and mean, what are your thoughts with that? Well, so far, I've noticed two things. We've noticed two things, and it comes out of the settlement that they've had, one of the settlements they had. The biggest one to me was that buyers' agents, and these are the real estate agents who are representing the buyers of the homes, can no longer advertise, can no longer suggest or say that they work for free. And we saw many buyer agents doing just that, right? Yes. In the past. That's a big no-no. Um, the other one that we've seen is in the actual database that we use. It's the Bright Multiple Listing Service. We call it the Bright MLS. But there's a place in there where you actually would put in the buyer's compensation. Sure. We used to be able to put a dollar if it was that. But now that's now you could put a zero if that's the case. So that's another big change. And I think they both kind of go back to transparency yeah. and also the idea that we think it's important buyers and sellers are very aware that compensation is negotiable. Yeah, and it truly always has been, right? That's, I mean, that's it, so true. We, we've, whether it was in a firm or whether it were the individual agents um, with outside the firm, mm -hmm. you know, and talking with other agencies, we always understood as an industry that these were always negotiable. Compensation right. was always negotiable. And there was really no set rate necessarily with regard to how much was paid to either one. Even if an agreement came up with the seller as to how much compensation they were paying, the amount that was dispersed out to the selling agent or the buyer agent was never really set in stone. It was all, right. again, negotiable, right? right? So I think, you know, along those lines, I think the bottom line is that we are going to proceed forward. Mm -hmm. You know, we will continue to, I think, see the advantages of these type of changes because the transparency, the disclosures that we are known for, certainly as professionals within the industry, I think can only enhance right. how we move forward, right? Yes. And one of the most important points that we, we make, and we talk about this, honestly, how can we continue to improve this, mm -hmm. is through the services that we offer to our clients, yes. both sellers as well as buyers. I mean, yes. through our experience, through our involvement in the community within the real estate industry itself, we will continue to hone those skills. And that's the advice that we continue mm -hmm. to give to our clients is to seek out the most professional, most up-to-date agents that are available. Yes, yes, and this is, um, it's not over yet. Um, it's still an ongoing um, process, but we will definitely stay on top of that and let you know as changes occur, if, if need be. Yeah, well, stay tuned because we will continue to update you with information that we're able to, uh, to find. Well, as always, we hope this information has been beneficial, that you've learned a lot from this video. And as always, we continue to suggest that you subscribe to our YouTube channel and subscribe to our weekly newsletter. That's right. So till next time. Bye. Bye. We'll hope to see you soon.